Mr. Hoover, we like to get a good, well-rounded sense of our candidates when they apply for the job. What would you consider to be your weakest points as it pertains to your professional life? My weaknesses? Well, you know, uh, they call me a perfectionist. I mean, I get things right, I like things done the right way, I like things done my way, I want things done in a certain kind of way. And uh, that's what my daddy always taught me, and that's what my mama always taught me, and that's what I teach my kids, and that's what I bring to the table for you. My weakness is I'm perfect. I'm a perfectionist. I want things done right. You're a perfectionist. Really? Okay, just going to take note of that. Hey, welcome back. This is Kevin. Not to make light of the situation, but perfectionism is a weakness. It's not one of those interview questions where they say, what's your weakness? And you say, I'm too organized. And I'm going to show you why in this video. Okay, first off, let's set up the data so that you buy into this. The American Psychological Association did a study between 1989 and 2021. And that study consisted of 84 studies and almost 24,000 college students in the US, Canada, and the UK. And what they learned is that over those 32 years, young people's perceptions of their parents' expectations went up 40%. So what that means for you and me is that between 1981 and 2021, college students believed that their parents had higher expectations for them than before, to a tune of 40% higher. And that was just one indicator that reveals to us that perfectionism is a problem. You know, it's almost like we wear that as a badge of honor these days, but I want you to really understand, if you're in your midlife, if you're a parent, if you're leading a team, leading people, your perfectionism is negatively impacting the people in your charge, the people you're raising, the people you love, the people you live with. And it's creating more anxiety, it's creating more fear of failure, and more importantly, it's creating a lower self-esteem. And to understand that, you have to understand the world that our kids live in. They live in a social media-driven society where comparison is easy to make, $10,000 now is a million dollars. And they deal with that all day. They deal with that at school. They deal with that at church. They deal with that on the playground. They deal with it all day long. And then they come home to you, the parent, who claims to be a perfectionist, and they have a real life set of expectations that they now feel is much higher than before. What does that do to our children? What we're talking about here is creating higher levels of anxiety because there is no reprieve if the parents have high expectations and are treating their kids like they need to be perfect. And here's the catch. If you're a perfectionist and you're an adult, that was put there by an adult in your life when you were a child. Perfectionism is a, it can be a traumatic response, but it is a response to feeling like you're inadequate. We need the validation. There is such thing as trauma by omission. And what that means is that when there's no validation or there's no unconditional love, it creates a perfectionist child, which is you, the perfectionist child. And you're trying not to have your kids fear failure, have anxiety, or have low self-esteem. And you're holding them to expectations that are creating anxiety, fear of failure, low self-esteem. Do you see the loop we're on here, people? So it's up to you to break the cycle. Oh, I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to push my children. You know, you want to push your children to be the best they can be, but you want to validate them along the way. And you want to make sure they know about your unconditional love. It's not as easy just saying, I love you and I support you. That's not enough. How are your actions backing up your words? So if you're a perfectionist in your business, in your marriage, in your life, and you're, you've got kids, and you've got people around you that you're, you're leading through this world, you're having a negative impact on them by claiming you're a perfectionist. Because it's not about getting things perfect. Perfectionism is about thinking that you need to be perfect. And what do we know about perfect? You can never be perfect. So as you're navigating this water of, of claiming your badge of honor of I'm a perfectionist and you're taking this weakness and spinning it thinking it's a positive, I want you to really understand what's going on here. Those little eyes that are watching you, they're looking at you going, I have to be perfect or I don't get dad's approval, mom's approval. I don't get their validation. The love is conditional. If I'm perfect, I am loved. If I'm imperfect, I am not loved. That's what is going on in those little minds. If you're a parent, here's how you reverse it. One, validation, validation, validation. Now, I'm not a big fan of participation trophies or overly validating when it's not deserved, but I do think every child, every person, every member of your team does something that's worth validating. And if we're not validating that, if all we're doing is say, yeah, but, you won the game, but, you didn't play well. That's not validation. That's actually the harshest form of criticism. Your efforts produced the result that we were going for, and it still wasn't good enough. And so you have to come at it from a different approach. You have to come at it from a place that doesn't create more trauma. And so when does the cycle stop? 
you have to choose, it stops with me. This video wasn't designed to give you solutions to the perfectionist problem. It was simply designed to shine a light on it. Awareness oftentimes is the answer, knowing that if you're a perfectionist, it's not a badge of honor. So I want you to get a grip on that. I really want you to have that in your hip pocket so that when you're making choices moving forward, you're changing the cycles. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Kevin. Have a great day.